Okay, so chapter eight, this is where we build the final system. So everything we've built up to now is just a temporary, uh, for temporary use for building this part of LFS. And this part of LFS is the final system. So chapter eight, installing basic system software. Um, there's some mention about optimizations. Um, I wouldn't worry about that if you're doing this to build for its educational purposes. If you are looking to build a system that you're going to be using and you want to optimize it, then yes, perhaps you might want to look at that, but there is a slim chance that something might break or something might not work correctly because of those optimizations are not always guaranteed to be accurate. There's something there about package management. I've never bothered with that because I don't consider that to be really part of LFS. Um, it's just something, I guess, if you want to extend past LFS itself. So I won't worry about that. So here we go. We we'll start with the basic installation of LFS with man pages. So let's extract that. And we move some files there and then just run an install command. And that's done. Move on to IANA ETC. Probably the smallest and quickest package to install. That's done. So we've got GLIBC now. So first we do the patch, then we create a separate build directory. And then create this config palms. And then run the configure. And we can run the make. So I'll just time this to see how long this one takes. Right, so that's finished building and we're going to run the checks now. I'll time these again. And these will probably take, judging by the SBUs, probably about 10 minutes or so.
Okay, so that is finished testing. We've got one failure, which is um, pretty good. Uh, 78 unsupported, 16 expected fails, and four unexpected passes, I think that is. So let's just scroll back and see what failed. And it's IO test L mod and as it says there, that's known to fail in the true environment. So that's um, a pretty good result. So that gives us confidence that the glibc that we've just built is in good condition. <clears throat> so let's now carry on with the installation. There's something there about an upgrade, so we can ignore that. Let's now proceed with the installation itself. Okay, and fix a hard-coded path to the executable loader in the LDD script. And then it says here to install locales. You can only you only need to install the ones for your area, but um, as it says there that these are the minimum set of locales necessary for optimal coverage of tests. So install these as well as your local locale you need and it looks like the locales that I would use which are these two are installed by default so I don't need to install any anything additional to this so I'll just copy them all in one go if there's any, any problem with any of them then the error should appear on the screen um, alternatively you can install every single locale which will take quite a while Um, it says then use local def command to create and install locales not listed in the glibc when you need them. For, in, for instance, the following two locales are needed for some tests later in this chapter. So it looks like we need to put these two in as well to ensure the tests run correctly. So now we add in this configuration file. and time zone data. So let's run this. So there's an explanation of what all these commands do just below. So one way to determine the local time zone is to run the following script. So if we just run that, it asks some questions. So it wants to know what continent I'm on and then what country I'm in. So I'm in Britain, which is number eight. And it says Europe stroke London will be used as the time zone. And it's confirming the um, time selected time is now 11.12, which it is, and the universal time is 10.12, which is correct. So yes, it is correct. So, and then it's just repeated there, the time zone details. So what I'll do with that information is to copy this command line here, go back and delete the X in the chevrons and append this information in that, in the place of those X's. And that's it. Create now the so.conf file. 
and there's an additional include directory here which is probably a good idea to put in and that's glibc completed I can move on to zlib now So configure, right, I think I need to get a mouse mount or something for this. Mouse seems to be uh, playing up quite a lot for some reason. Let's see if this is any better. Right, configure user. And build it. some tests on what we've just built and that looks all okay and install the package that's done nice and simple and move on next to bzip2 okay so that generally means there's a patch file which there is, so we'll put that in first and change some symbolic links change the location of the man pages prepare it for compiling and build package and install and shared library to install create a sim link install the shared bzip2 binary and replace two copies of bzip2 with sim links and remove a useless static library and that's done so next is xed Configure the build build the package and run some tests. All looks good. Install it. So next we've got LZ4. So this is a brand new package. So let's see how we get on with this. Okay, looks like we've got to force the test to run on one thread or one job at least and as, far as I can see that looks okay there's no errors or anything so we can install the package and that's done Move on to Z standard. Yeah, 
In the test output, there are several places that indicate failed. These are expected not only failed in capitals and actual test failures. There should be no test failures. So it looks like the build runs tests. Oh no, sorry, here it is, make check underneath. Right, okay. So let's run that. And as long as you don't see fail in capitals, everything's all right. Okay, it didn't look like there's any problems with that. Right, so a quick eyeball of all this, it does look okay, so we'll just go on and install it. There's no final result, which makes it a little bit difficult to determine, but it does look okay. Uh, my mask on now, there it is. Okay. So next we've got file. It looks like it all passed, installed, and it's done. So, read line next. A couple of set commands to put in. There's another one. Configure the build. And compile the package. Install the package. And some documentation. And that's done. So now we've got M4. Okay, build it. And run some checks. That looks 
looks all good. Install and that's done. So BC It's configured, let's build it. Run some tests. So all BC tests passed and install. It's complete. Now move on to flex. So configure it. Build it. And run some tests. And that looks like that's a pass. Install it and just create a couple of sim links. And we move on to TCL. So there's two files here. We want the source one. Build it. Okay, that's always a little bit unnerving when it pauses for a while and nothing apparently seems to be happening. Um, but that's finished successfully, so we've just got some sed commands to put in. And unset that variable that was set earlier. And run the tests.
So that's finished. Um, so there it says zero failed, so that's all good. So we can install the package. So I've got to rename a package that will conflict with a Perl man page and install some documentation, which, as it says, is optional. But I feel it's always good to have documentation available on an installation. That's done. So expect next. So this has got a patch. So extract that one. So we need to verify that the PTYs are working. So they've got a new command here now to do that. That looks okay. Oh, it does say it should output okay. Um, and it explains what you might need to do to resolve it. It does say this issue needs to be resolved before continuing or, or the test suites requiring expect, for example, bash, bin utils, GCC, GDBM, and of course expect itself will fail catastrophically and other subtle breakages may also happen. So we're okay, all okay. We've got okay as a response. That's good. We can carry on. So configure. Build the package, test the results. And that's all passed. So let's install it and Create a symlink. That's done. And now we've got Deja GNU. So got a temporary build directory to create and change into. Prepare it for compilation. And check the results. Looks all good. Install it and directory and some documentation to install. And it's done. So next up we've got package config. <coughs> Got a configure command. Build 
it and install and two sim links to create and that's done so move on to bin utils now Temporary directory. Configure for building. And start the compile. Okay, let's finish building. Now I'm going to run some test suites. So let's see how long this takes.
Okay, so we've got some failures here. That's LD summary. Let's have a look. It's ported. That's okay. So it does say that 12 tests fail in the gold test suite. And we can get a list of failed tests by running this. Okay, yes, yeah, so they're all in the gold test suite. And let's put that through WC to get the word count. Yeah, there's 12 lines there. So that is the 12 that have been reported in the book. So we're all okay to carry on installing uh, as they're known about. And remove some useless static libraries. And move on to GMP. So if you're building a 32-bit X, 32 X86 CPU, but you've got a CPU which, is, sorry, if you're building for 32-bit X86 code, we have a CPU which is capable of running 64-bit and you've specified the C flags, you need to run the config with this ABI equals 32. And there's some information there about GMP optimizing for the host processor. So if you're going to install these binaries on a another machine of a early architecture that you need to make some changes to avoid that happening. Okay, so we'll build this. <clears throat> and build the documentation. And run the tests. And it says to ensure that 199, at least 199 tests in the test suite passed. And we can use this command to find out how many did. And we've got 199, so that's good. So let's now install the package. And the documentation. And move on to MPFR. So configure. Build. And build the documentation. Run the tests. And it says test results ensure that all 198 passed. So we need to look back. Yep, 198 tests and all passed. So that's okay. So make install and install documentation as well. And that's done. So MPC next. Configure. <clears throat> Build it. Documentation, test the results. Uh, 
So we've got 74 tests there, 74 passes, that's fine. Install. And install documentation. Next we've got ATTR. build and run the tests all passed well it's two tests and two two uh, passes so it's fine and install ACL next So configure and build. The ACL test must be run on a file system that supports access controls, but not until core utils package has been built using the ACL libraries. If desired, return to this package and run make check after core utils package has been built. Okay, so we'll just install it for now. And what I do here is to tidy up and instead of carrying on as normal I load up the next package in a new tab and then I've got this little reminder here as long as I keep note of it that we need to come back to ACL to do the full tests on it so carry on with libcap Set command, build package, test the package, and that looks okay. It says pass there, and install it. That's done. libxcrypt configure build it check the results So 31 passed, 12 were skipped, no, no failures, so that's good. Install it. The instructions above disabled obsolete API functions since no package installed by compiler from sources will link against them. Okay, so probably don't need to do that unless you know you need it, so we'll ignore that. And tidy up. And move on to shadow. So if you've installed Linux PAM, you should follow the LFS shadow page. Well, we haven't because we're following the LFS book. But once you get to BLFS, you, you would be advised to install Linux PAM. And it does show you how to rebuild shadow with Linux PAM support. Um, and again, enforcing strong uh, passwords. I believe that's in, yeah, it is in BLFS. So that's nothing to worry about at the moment. So disable the installation of the groups program and its main pages as Core Utils provides a better version. Also prevent the installation of main pages that are already installed in section 8.3. So we'll put these commands in to do that. Instead of using the default crypt method, use a much more secure yes crypt method of password encryption, which also allows passwords longer than eight characters. 
It was also necessary to change the obsolete VAR school mail location for user mailboxes that Shadow uses by default to the VAR mail location used currently. Okay, so that's what this command does. We haven't used cracklib, so we'll just touch this file and configure shadow for compiling. And we'll start the build off and install it. And I guess this installs some man pages, this command here. So configuring shadow, we convert the passwords and the groups. Shadow's default configuration for the user ad needs some explanation. So we need to put this in. Um, I won't go through that now, but need to do this too. Um, so if you'd rather not create these mail spool files, issue the following command. So let's do that so we don't get those commands, uh, those um, mailbox files created. And then finally, we set a password for the root. So this is the password that you'll use to log in as the root user when we first reboot into the new LFS system. So it's important to remember what you set this password to because you won't be able to get into your shiny new LFS system otherwise. So that's shadow complete. We'll move on to GCC next. So GCC, this is definitely the largest and, well, maybe not the largest, certainly the largest during the compiler, the number of files it creates, um, but it's certainly the longest, takes the most amount of time to build. Um, so we start inside the GCC. Again, this is only for x8664, but if you run this command on a 32-bit or if you're unsure, um, it will just do the right thing. It knows what to do. So configure the build. And start the build. Let's see how long this takes. It shouldn't be too, too long, a few minutes. And then we'll run the tests after, which will take... A substantial amount of time.
Okay, so six minutes, 40 seconds to compile that. So let's start the test. It says GCC. Oh, some more information here. In this section, the test suite for GCC is considered important, but it takes a long time. First time builders encouraged to run the test suite. The time to run the test can be reduced significantly by adding JX to make minus K check command below where X is the number of CPU cores on the system. Okay, so that's interesting. Um, GCC may need more stack space compiling some extremely complex code patterns as a precaution for, for the host distros with a tight stack limit explicitly set the stack size hard limit to infinite on most host distros in the final LFS system the hard limit is infinite by default but there is no harm done by setting it explicitly it's not necessary to change the stack size soft limit because GCC will automatically set it to appropriate value as long as the value does not exceed the hard limit. So this has changed since or prior Linux from scratch versions, these um, next few commands. So let's run that. And now they're removing uh, tests that are known to fail. So I guess it makes it kind of easier to see the results of the GCC test now in that we won't be um, having to search through these ones that are known about to look for potential genuine failures um, these are probably fail because of the lfs environment or for um, other long-standing reasons um, it could be even like the fact that we're in the true environment so we've disabled those or fixed, this either disabled or fixed known test failures. We're changing the ownership of the build directory to tester. And we're going to run the checks, the tests as tester. And before doing anything else, I'm going to add minus J16 to this to see if we can improve the time it takes for the test to run. and wait for that to finish.
Right, so that's finished testing. Um, I wish I'd timed that now because I'm not sure that it was as quick as I thought it would be. But anyway, uh, let's see if we can get the results of that. I'll use the right mouse. So we can get a summary with this command here, but I think it just scrolls it all off the screen, yeah. So what might be better is to put it through this grep command I've got here. Which is a little bit easier to read. So we've got no failures there for G++. None for GCC, none for libatomic, none for libgomp. There's none there. So it looks like that's a complete pass. Considering, of course, that they've re removed or fixed some tests. So it certainly is a lot easier to interpret, I think. Yeah, and less worry that you might have, you might think there's something still wrong. So that's all good. Let's now install this GCC and change the ownership. Create a link and another one. A capacity compatibility sim link. And now we do some tests to ensure that the tool chain is fully functional. So that looks okay. That all looks good. Verify the compiler is searching for the correct header files. So, yep, that all matches. Did that twice there. Yep, that's all okay as well. 32 bit system slightly different. Let me put that there. Let's see, you succeeded. That's correct. Yep, that's correct. So everything's working correctly. We can clean up these test files. We have a misplaced file. And that's GCC complete. So we carry on with n curses. So it says test can be run after the package has been installed. So let's do that now. Uh, 
and to not test as such more like operability or checking the operation of end curses. So we need to put this in and this one. Install some documentation. And there's a bit there about um, some non Y character libraries that require version 5, which is the previous version. So I won't bother with that. So all we need to do is go into the test directory and uh, basically executing any of the executables here will do something. For example, the Christmas one. Gives a little greetings card, an animated greetings card. Um, if I can remember the others that are quite useful to look at, um, let's try view. No, not that one then. Um, let's try rain. Okay, so it looks like raindrops on water. Let's try railroad. Okay, so it looks like a message being scrolled in a letter at a time at the bottom. Um, oh yeah, the Hanoi one's quite a good one. Performs a, or is actually a game. I thought it did solved it automatically. Um, so yeah, you can play this. From one to two, I see. From one to three, two to three, one to two, three to one, three to two, one to two, and so on. You get the idea. So that looks like that works. Um, let's do one more. Uh, okay, let's try fireworks. It sounds like a good one. Yep, so you can see the character based graphics are all working fine. So let's tidy that up and move on to said. So let's build that and make some documentation. Run the tests as tester. install the package because that was all okay and install the documentation and that's done ps misc Configure, build, run some checks, 
Oh, it looks good. And install. Oh, that's done. So get text next. Let's configure it. Okay, let's build it now. Okay, and we're going to run some tests. It says to take three SBUs, which still should only be like three or four minutes or so, but let's see what it actually does take. Okay, well that took 22 seconds in the end, so not quite three SBUs, but maybe it automatically uses all the cores it can find. So we've got 395 tests, uh, 359 passes and 36 skips, so that's all okay. So let's now install this. And move on to Python. So just tidy that one up. Nope. 
Right, so um, just check. Okay, let's configure this one. Build it and run test. Now again, it, it says it takes five and a half SBUs, but let's time it and see what it actually does take. Okay, that's done, so that's probably a little bit more accurate in terms of SBUs. Um, we've got 712 tests successful, 64 skipped, so that sounds all right. We can go ahead and install it. And tidy that up. Move on to grep. So let's test what we've just built. Okay, and everything's passed, there's no fails. Install that and it's complete. And move on to bash.
that. And now we'll run some tests. Right, it says run built-ins is known to fail, so it looks like this might be an FPS Claudus. So I'll just scroll back. Yeah, it does say the difference is prefixed with the chevrons, so it looks like that has failed. Um, but it's known to fail on some host distros, and it doesn't explain why at all, so there's another one. There as well. I'll do not consider it a test failure, so that's okay. Okay, that's finished. I didn't see that there are any other errors, so that's all good to install. And run the newly compiled bash program with this command. And that's done. Next we've got libtool. Configure, build it, and it says here we run make check that five tests are known to fail in the LFS build environment due to a circular dependency. But these tests pass if rechecked after Auto Make has been installed. So. I'm basically going to do the same as what I did with um, ACL, which is waiting for core utils. In fact, I can't remember that if we've done that or not, if I've forgotten about that. No, we haven't done it yet. It's coming. Perhaps another hour or so. So that's not a problem.
Okay, so that looks like that's passed. I know we have got some fails here, of course. So... Fifty-eight were expected failures. So it looks like there's actually seven failures there then. All oh, right. Additionally, with grep three point eight or newer, two tests will trigger a warning for non-posits, regular expressions, and fails. So that explains the other two then. Explains why we've got two failing. So that's. A pass at the moment. I'll install this for now because we need to install it. And after um, Automake has been installed, we can rerun this uh, and double check that it does pass. So I'll once again open this in a new tab. So I've now got to look out for auto make and core utils to come back to those ones. So let's carry on with GDBM. So all 34 tests were successful. Install that and that's done. Next we've got gperf. So apparently this fails with parallel checking. So we'll do it with one job and it seems to have worked what, from what I can see from that. There's certainly no error messages installed and it's done. Expat. So we build with make run some checks. Oops, I didn't copy. Yep, that's passed. And that's installed okay. And install some documentation and that's done. INET utils Okay, so we can now build and run some checks. That's passed. 
I can store and move one program and that's done. Less So 14 tests with zero errors, that's fine. And that's done. So now move on to Perl. So we need to use these two commands to force Perl to use the system libraries rather than its own internal versions. Okay, and let's build it now. And now we run the tests, which it says takes approximately 11 SBU. So let me time this.
Right, that finished quicker than I could make a cup of coffee in. So that looks like that's all successful. Uh, yeah, we've got a result of pass there, so that's okay. Let's install the package. And unset these two variables. Let's complete. XML parser next. So once again, these are in capitals. We'll start with capitals, this uh, package. So that's a pass and we can install it now. And that's done. Intel tool. Test the results of the build, and that's a pass. And make install and install it. That's done. Okay, so auto conf next. Okay, so we've got 549 passes, no fails reported, so we can install that. And we want to auto make.
Okay, using four parallel jobs speeds up the test, even on system with fewer logical calls, that should be. Uh, due to internal delays in individual tests, the test results issue this. Um, so let's put that in. Uh, I think this takes quite a while, does it? Okay, just one SPU with the tests. Okay, so let's time this. Wait for that to finish. Right, so those have 
past um, some skips, some expected failures, um, but no unexpected failures, so that's okay. Uh, I'm surprised how long that took in the end, being as it said it's 1.1 SBU with the tests. Um, from what I can see, this looks like it's saying if there's more than four cores, use those number of cores, otherwise use four um, cores or use four jobs. So I'm surprised that that would have used all 16 cores, if I'm interpreting that correctly. Um, so it actually took a lot longer than one SPU or 1.1, uh, more like five or six SPUs, but again, that's the inaccuracies of the SBUs which is unavoidable. So that's auto make completed. So now we can go back to libtool which had a circular dependency with auto make. So let's now rebuild this. And now this time we should get those five tests passing, but we'll still have the other two tests failing because grep hasn't changed. So there's one. Okay, so once again, we have got errors. Yep, so 
seven failed but five were expected so that leaves the two that we've got failed so there's the other one there at the bottom and if you remember the first one failed up here so that's all okay so that's proved that the build was successful i'm going to reinstall this because i know i've tested it i'm confident that this is a good build more confident last time because i've had more successes and once again remove this library so i'll close that tab down go back to auto make and we carry on with open ssl So build package. Okay, so let's run the tests. Okay, that's all done we've got the pass as a result so that's fine and now let's install the package some additional documentation there and that's just about upgrading it so kmod next It says a test suite of this package requires raw kernel headers, not the sanitized versions installed earlier, which will be on the scope of LFS. So we just go ahead and install it. Libelf from Elf Utils.
that's all passed so we can install Done. So lib FFI next. Again, there's a note there about the fact that this package optimizes itself. Um, and it says to change this last parameter if that's an issue. Okay, that's finished. It says number of expected passes. And it doesn't look like there's any failures there at all. So that's all okay to install. And it's done. So now we reinstall Python. Remember it's capital P.
Okay, so it looks like it's a finish on that one. Yeah, it looks like it's done. So let's do the test now. Okay, I wasn't sure if that was finished then, so I pressed enter and it's that's why there's an extra prompt at the bottom. So result failure then success. So it says that's all right here. Some tests are flaky, so the test suite will automatically rerun failed test. The test failed, but then pass when rerun it should be considered as passed, so that's all okay. Um okay, so Yes, 26 were skipped, 3 were skipped, and then 2 were rerun. And result failure then success, so that's all okay then. Let's install that. And it says there to ignore that message. And we can put that script in. Right, 
it says information there about PIP3, but I, I suppose we'd only be running that under direction from LFS or BLFS. So let's now put some documentation on the system. And that's Python complete. And we'll move on to flit core. And that looks like that's all there is. And we move on to wheel. And that's done. And set up tools. It's done. And next we do Ninja. So it says here when run Ninja normally utilizes the greatest possible number of processes in parallel. By default, this is number of calls on system plus two. This may overheat the CPU or make the system run out of memory. Well, um, my consideration would be that the CPU is not installed correctly or the cooling's in insufficient, if that's a possibility, because that should never happen under, under any circumstances. Um, when Ninja is invoked from the command line, passing the JN parameter will limit the number of parallel processes. Some packages embed the execution of Ninja and do not pass the JN parameter to it. So using the optional procedure below allows the user to limit the number of parallel processes via an environment variable Ninja jobs. So um, this is probably a good idea to do in case you want to restrict the number of jobs for some reason. So we can make some modifications with this said string here and then build ninja with that command. So that's done. Let's now install it. Okay, my mouse is playing off. I think this is destined for the dustbin. <laughs> this one next so that's done now we go on to Mizen and we compile it with this command test suite requires some packages outside the scope of LFS so we install it with these commands. And that's that one done. And we move on to core utils. So 
So we've got a patch here. And then we start the configuration with these commands. Okay, and start the build off. And now we run the test. So first run a test that meant to run as the user root. So that's all okay. We're going to run the remainder of the tests as the test user. Certain tests require the user to be a member of more than one group. So they're not skipped, add a temporary group and make the user tester a part of it. So we'll do that. And fix some permissions on the non root so the non root user can compile and run the tests. Now run a test using dev null for the standard input or two tests may be broken if building LFS in a graphical terminal or on a session in SSH or GNU screen because the standard input is connected to a PTY from a host distro and a device node for such a PTY cannot be accessed from the LFS truth environment. So we'll put that all in. Okay, so we've got passes there, but I did see, yeah, there's some errors at the end here. I did see some red code passed. It does say that two tests are known to fail. So let's just scroll back and look to see what actually happened. Okay, there it is there. Yeah, it was two failures there. So there's another suite of tests. Um, let's see if we can find the names of these. No, that doesn't look like that's going to be easy to find. So let's go back and see if it tells us if we can view them. Let's see test, test week log for debugging so skip so that's a skip let's look for the word fail see if that comes up anywhere CP preserve mode so that's the first one that's mentioned that's fine Let's look again for the next one. Tests MV ACL. Yep, so the two that have failed are the two that are mentioned in the book, so that's fine. So let's now delete the dummy group and proceed to install the package into the system. And move some programs around.
So that's core utils complete. So now we can go back to ACL because that had a dependency on core utils for the tests. And we can now rebuild this. And we run make check. Okay, so we've got some failures there. Let's do an ALD config and rerun that. No, they're still failing, so I'm not sure why they're failing. Permissions set faculty with store. That doesn't indicate that's all oh, right. Okay, so it must be run on file system supports access controls. So it's possible that these um, ACL is not set in the kernel. Um, that's probably why these are failing. Um, I wonder if we can do. Mine sign ACL. Let's have a look. So it has got ACL capabilities in the kernel. Um, so I'm not sure why. Those have failed. Um, and we've built the core utils package. So, um, and we've installed core utils. Yeah. Um, I would suggest it might be worth retesting this after we've booted into the new system in case that's the problem. Um, yeah, there's nothing to indicate what else might be wrong now. That's anything I can think of. Um, but apart from that, it looks like it should work. Root restore, root permissions, and set. Yeah, I'm not sure why that is. So yeah, I think that would be something to test in the final system. So all I can do is just install this again, because at least I've tested part of the package and that looks good. This can't be any worse than uh, installing a package that's been untested as it was before. So I'll move ACL and we'll carry on with check. So that's all passed. Oh, sorry, no, it's still going. I thought that had finished then. Okay, so it actually says two SBUs with the test, so we'll give it a chance to complete.
Okay, so that passed. So now I can install it. And that's done. Move on to diff utils. Check what we've built. All okay. So let's install that. And that's complete. Move on to Gork. We're going to test it by changing all the files to test ownership and then run that command. All tests passed, it says. symlink and install some documentation and that's complete Find your tools next. So again, to test, we change ownership of the files to tester and become that user tester to run the tests. Okay, that's 
complete so we can install it's all passed and tidy up so groff and we need to put this in and set the page size we wish to use so it's usually letter for us and a4 probably for everywhere else Run some tests. That looks all good. Let's just, oops, just run it again. I don't know why that didn't copy. And that's done. So we move on to Grub next. So it says if your system has UEFI support and you wish to boot LFS with UEFI, you need to install Grub with UEFI support and its dependencies by following the instructions on the BLFS page. So we need to go to BLFS. So let me get rid of this one and open this link up and install Grub with these instructions. So it looks like we need an additional download And we've got some dependencies here. We've got EFI boot manager, which is needed at runtime. Free type, and I won't bother with the optional dependencies. So free type. So I'm not gonna install these other recommended packages. Um, I'm not sure if which is needed actually. I'll try and install without them, and if anything happens, then I'll install them. I can't remember exactly what's needed to be installed. Uh, what I'm going to do here is create a BLFS directory because we're in BLFS now. We've gone off the LFS book. It's unfortunate it's like this, but that's the way it is. Uh, as I said before, UFI entails a bit more building just as system D does and it just extends the LFS build and makes it more complicated and it kind of takes the focus away from building LFS. Uh, but as I also said before this machine it's necessary there's no compatibility mode on it. So we need to download these two packages. So the first one Use that one there. We use wget. No, I'm not going to have wget on my note. So I'll have to open a new tab. Become root. Um, no, it shouldn't really matter actually. Oh, yes, it might do. So sudo su minus cd. So I want to change into the mount lfs sources blfs. So that's the equivalent or the real path if you like and this is the true path sources BLFS and I want to run wget here paste that in and also want to download that one as well And just to be sure what I've got is good, I'll just double check the signatures. So the first one looks okay. Just look at the first few and last few characters. And that one looks okay as well. So let's go back here and extract free type now. To. 
so we've got the documentation for free type we've downloaded so let's install that into the build tree and then build it so in blfs they bulk all the commands together um, all in one go so i'll just copy this so if anything fails it will fail immediately and stop there it won't carry on trying to do anything else Right, it doesn't look like there's any errors there, so it looks like those recommended dependencies aren't absolutely necessary to get free type working. Let's now install that and we'll install the documentation as well. And that's done. So that's free type done. Now we go back to EFI Boot Manager. We've got two dependencies for this. So that's only an optional dependency. So let's fetch popped. Again, check the signature of popped. Make sure it matches. Yep, that looks good. Go back. Extract popped and build it, configure and build it. That's all finished. We can run some tests. Uh, in fact, I don't think I will run these tests because this is assuming we're running these as the ordinary user although there's no warnings actually so I guess I could run them uh, normally there's a warning about running tests as root if they're dangerous so there that's passed let's install this and we didn't build the API documentation so that's popped completely complete completed So now we've got EFI var and it's got mandoc as a recommendation. So again, I'm going to see if I can build this without having to install mandoc. So let's fetch EFI var and check it again. Yep, that's okay. Go back. Extract it and start installing. Right, the test it actually says here the test suite this package is dangerous running it may trigger firmware bugs or make your system unusable without using some special hardware to reprogram the firmware. So we've actually got an error and Mandoc is required, so really it'd be nice if that said uh, that mandoc was required rather than recommended um, because it looks like it actually won't build without mandoc so I'm going to tidy this up and we'll get mandoc page up and go over here and download it Check the signature, that looks good. Back again, extract man doc. And build it. Test the package with this command here. Okay, all fourteen hundred and twenty seven tests. Okay. 
So no failures. So now let's install Mandoc. That's done. Tidy up. Back to EFIVR. So let's extract it again. Uh, XVF man. Oh, no, sorry, not Mandoc. I keep catching the S button. Okay, so let's have another go at this now. So we just run make. That's better. And install it. And that's the five R done. Shut that one down and we're back to EFI Boot Manager now. So let's copy that link back to this tab, fetch that file. And that ties up, so that's okay. So build it with this command. If I boot, what's gone wrong here? Let's try that. No, so why is that not working? To include if I boot to H. Oh, I don't know why that's not being found. Let's go back here, did I miss something? I'm not sure why that's not being found. Oh, package pops not found. Oh, that's strange. Did I not do the install command on that? So I look back. So I accidentally re-ran it. Oh yes, I haven't. Yes, I didn't install it because I ran the check again by accident. Okay, so 
let's um, load that up again and tidy this up. So I think I was a little bit hasty and thought I'd completed it. So let's redo popped. Recheck it. That's all good. So let's make sure this works. I thought I did this command. Maybe it didn't copy properly. And it copied and it just reused the previous command. So that's definitely installed this time. So let's shut that down and go back to EFI Boot Manager. And this should work now. Yeah, that's better. And as the root user, install it. Now, does this go into this option specifies distro subdirectory under boot EFI EFI? So I need to actually mount my boot partition now. Um, so I need to mount, uh, what are they? So I need to mount the boot partition, which is that one at boot. And then I need to make an EFI subdirectory so that I can mount the EFI partition. In fact, yeah, shall I call it lowercase EFI like they've done there? That might be a good idea. And then mount the EFI partition at boot EFI. Okay, now should be able to run this. Has it done anything? No, it hasn't actually done anything at this moment, so it must be something that happens later. Let's look to see if anything has actually changed there. No, okay, so that's all right anyway, but at least we've got these um, partitions mounted in the correct places. So that's EFI Boot Manager complete. And we can go back to grub. Oh yeah, I think there's something wrong with this mouse. It's ignoring the movement. I wonder if there's a dodgy wire or something. Um, let me try another mouse. Rather than try and struggle against that. Let's see if this one works. No, it looks like this one's having troubles as well. All oh, right, okay, so that's got a flat battery. Let's get another battery. Let's see how long this one lasts for. Right, that seems to be all right for the moment. So let's see how we go. Um, right. Okay, so we've removed that. We can get rid of this. And right, okay, now I've got to get used to the mouse. That's a little bit faster. It's overshooting everything I want to point at. Um, okay, so we've done free type. We've done EFI boot manager. So we should be able to download these files for grub 
Uh, let me slow this mouse down. It's too fast. Uh, point of speed. Let's do adaptive. That's a bit better. Let's see how I'll go with that. Right, so yeah, let's download. We've got Grub. We should have Grub already. It's this uni font that's needed. So let's copy that link and fetch it. Yep, so that's okay. Let's go back here. And what I shall do is to extract grub here. So I'll do dot dot grub 212. Yep, that version matches cd grub. And then I'll be able to just copy and paste these commands and they should all work, even though I'm not in my source directory. This is still a bit fast, this mouse. Let's try one more notch. Right, now it's probably a bit too slow. Let's see how I go. Right, so we've extracted grub. We've run this command to install the font file. We haven't got any flag set. Add a missing file from the release table. If you're running 32 bit LFS, prepare a 64 bit compiler. We don't need that. And build grub with the following commands. Okay, so it looks like there's a typo there. It says now if you skip the LFS grub package, so I assume that should say skipped, which we have done because we've come here to install grub. So we'll need to run these two commands when the compiler's finished. Okay, and again, there's a typo there. If you've not skipped LFS grub package or the LFS grub package as the root user, only install components not installed from the LFS grub package instead. So we don't need to do this because we didn't not skip it, if you like. If the optional dependencies are installed, also install the grub mounts program, optional dependencies. Okay, no, so we don't run that. We didn't install the optional dependencies. Um, so it does say you can emit free type, which is what I've done before, but it does say that the um, either fonts, some text won't be displayed or will be displayed using a coarse font in a small region of the screen. So um, I think we had these switches turned on. Yeah, we did. So that's all okay. Configuring Grub, so we need to move on to the next part, which is this one already highlighted. You can see we've been there already. So let's go there, see if there's anything else to do. So there's some kernel configuration we must do. Emergency boot disk. Um, I think we can't do anything more there until we've got further into building the LFS system. So what I should do is just tidy up this Grub now and go back to the LFS sources directory and carry on and leave this page up to deal with when uh, we're at the appropriate
point in the book. So let's move on to gzip now. And configure. Need to adjust the mouse again. Perhaps this adaptive is not a good idea. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. It's really slow now. Right, let's see. It just seems to be behaving slightly differently, this mouse, to the other one. Um, right, so that's configured. Let's build this. Yes, it's still too slow. I think part of the problem is the recording that I'm looking at is a slight lag behind what's actually on the screen. So that's not helping. So I'm tending to overshoot things that I'm targeting. So let's check this now. All good, and let's now install, and that's done. IP root next. So just do some modifications here. Explained in that paragraph at the top and compile the package. That's complete. We'll install some documentation. Okay, that's done. Next we've got KBD. So we've got this patch to put in. some changes to make Run some tests, locate and install. And there's some documentation here to install as well. That's complete. So now we can move on to lib pipeline. Again, that's the make and run some tests and install the package. 
That's complete. So now we're going to do make. Right. Configure. Build. Change the ownership of the make directory to or the contents at least to tester and run the checks as tester. Okay, so it says regression passed and it actually says no failures with a little smiley. So let's install that and tidy up. So next we move on to patch. And we run configure. Build it and run some tests. And they're all okay. So we can install and that's done. So now we're on to tar. Configure it.
Okay, so that's finished testing. We need to grab this for the string all done. So let's do that in the file that it got redirected to, which is vim-test.log. And there it is there, it's repeated it, so it shows that it exists there. And it was successful as it says there. So let's install. And make some links so that Vi works as well as Vim. Configure this. Uh, there's one modification I'll make to that because I have started using it. I found it more and more useful recently. Uh, is to add in uh, put it after this. Set ruler. So oh, looks like it might already have been defaulting to that. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, no, yes, it is. It looks like maybe the defaults have changed. Um, it's to basically for me to provide that the column and row number so maybe the defaults maybe these defaults here that are being included maybe they never were before possibly uh, so i won't touch anything else in that then and that's that so now we move on to markup safe Okay, this looks like it's a capital M, yep. So it's markup safe. Next is ginger. Is this another one in capitals? No, it's not. And that's that. You dev from system D. Two five six. Oh, yeah, it does say they use system D two five six dot four dot title XZ as the tarball. So remove two unneeded groups, remove one new dev rule. Adjust the hard coded paths to network configuration files and prepare for compilation. So let's make a temporary directory. We need to export this variable here. Only build components needed for UDEV. So I'll copy all of this command. And 
and install the package. So we'll do one of these at a time. As I say, it's a bit intensive, but it ensures that we don't miss any errors that may occur. Shouldn't be any, but you never know. Something might have gone wrong, might have copied or pasted something, missed something out. It's quite easy to do. Get this mouse on the right line. As long as you see some output that looks sane and related to the command we've put in, then that's okay. And even more so, there's no errors. Just uh, okay. Install some custom rules, rules and support files used in the in, an in, in LFS environment. Install some man pages. Looks like removing anything related to system D there from the main pages and finally unset the UDEV helpers variable which was set earlier. Configuring UDEV, so we need to do UDEV hardware database update and that's done. MANDB next. So prepare the build for compilation by configuring it. Build it and run some check. Oops, run some checks. That's all okay. That's now installed. Right now, this mouse is causing problems. Okay, and that's done. So some information there about other languages. Proc PSNG is the next package. So 
let's build it. And run some tests as the test user. Okay, that's passed. There's no errors at the end. So now let's install and that's done. So util Linux next. Okay, let's start the build off. It says to running the test as the root user can be harmful. Um, and you've got to change some kernel settings, which obviously can't do because we're in a live CD, live image. And for complete coverage, other BLFS packages must be installed. So we'll skip that. And go straight down. Oh, hang on. Is it this? Oh, this is the tester. So we can actually do this. So touch etc fs tab. Churn tester. And run the tests as the tester user. Okay, that's done. All 313 tests have passed, so let's now install. And move on to E2FS progs. So the first thing we need to do is create a temporary build directory. And now we can run the configure command. Build the package. run some tests. Okay, here we've got one failed, which is the one that's mentioned in the book. This assumes storage uh, pre-zeroed. If I click on it, that one there. So that's fine. Let's install. Remove use of static libraries. Okay, that's not worked again. Seems like the highlighting disappears sometimes. Okay. This package installs a gzip info file but doesn't update the system wide dir. Unzip this file and then update the system dir using the following command. So Unzip it and install it. And some additional documentation can be created and installed. Conf 
configuring. Um, some utilities not in, cannot recognize the XT. Right, okay, so nothing in LFS or BLFS will be affected up by that, but it says here how to modify the defaults in case that is a problem. So let's tidy that up and move on to syskalogd. So that's done. Let's configure it or at least create a configuration file. And that's done. And move on to sysv init. So we've got a patch. make, install, and it's done. So about debugging symbols, um, it says here how much space can be saved by removing them um, and stripping it's entirely optional. If the intended user is not a program, does not plan to do any debugging of system software, um, you can decrease the system size by two gigabytes. Um, most users or most people who use the commands below do not experience any difficulties. However, it's easy to make a mistake and render the system unusable. Um, so before running strip commands, it's a good idea to make a backup of the LFS system in its current state. So I have had problems with this before and I'm not sure if it's something I've been doing elsewhere. Um, and because I'm not really 100% sure what it is that causes it, I'm not gonna do this this time. Um, just in case. Um, but otherwise it does save roughly the amount of space uh, mentioned. So I'm just going to go straight on to cleaning up. Um, we can remove stuff left over in temp. Delete these LA files. And remove the compiler built in chapter seven, six and seven. and remove the tester user. So next we move on to system configuration. <laughs> 